welcome back to the Pearlworks channel. My name is John and in this video I'm going to show you how I make my little apothecary chests. I've made a few of these on the channel in the past few years and I'll probably have a few more later this year as well but each time I make one I refine the process a bit and I'd like to share some of those processes with you. To start off I'll joint two sides flat and square then rip strips of the table saw. Similar to my barrister bookcase build these strips will be glued together to make Coruscant panels. I ripped the strips about an eighth inch heavy, which gives me room to remill once the panels are glued up. I needed a total of eight panels, four of them at a half inch thick for the outer case, and four more at three eighths inch thick for the inner dividers. I try to keep all of the strips in sequential order so that the grain for each panel looks as uniform as possible. At the start of most of my projects I have a bunch of panels to glue up and I usually run into a bit of a bottleneck with a shortage of clamps. So I try to glue them up as quick as possible as soon as possible so that I can get moving with the rest of the project. I'll do as many as I can with what clamps I have available and then move on to something else like cleaning the shop or just another part of the project and then come back once those first set of panels are dry and glue up the rest of them. Once the panels are dry, I can remill them at the joiner and planer. I take them down pretty close to the final thickness at the planer and finally bring them down to the exact final thickness at the drum sander. This is especially important for the dividers which need to fit a specific router bit. In the past, I would use a dado stack for my smaller apothecary chest, but I've since switched to a new method involving the router. The next few steps are fairly typical, rip the panels to final width and cross cut to final length. I then route a groove to hold the back panel and from there I can work on the joinery for the outer case which as always is done with dowels. And more specifically I'm using quarter inch by one inch dowels which is what I usually lean on for most of these smaller builds. I do have some inch and a half long dowels but I have noticed that they're not really necessary and just require a little bit more drilling than is needed. Okay, so here's one of the major changes to how I make these chests now. Every now and again, my dados aren't as precise as I would hope, so I came up with this jig to ensure each and every one is routed consistently. The jig has a top and a bottom, which are identical and have grooves that correspond to the drawer spacing for this particular chest. The inner piece of the jig corresponds to the thickness of the material and also aligns those outer pieces with dowels. For the outer case, I'm only routing a dado on one side and need the half inch spacer. I have a 3 8 inch dado bit and a 5 8 inch guide bushing which leave me with the exact results I'm hoping for. And just as a side note, I made this jig last year for a slightly shallower chest which is why the grooves don't reach the back groove. With the outer case routed, I can size my two vertical dividers. I use a test piece and make multiple cuts to sneak up on the right fit, and once those are sized, I can take them back to the jig and route their dados. This is where the jig truly shines because it was cut on the CNC and has alignment pins, I can trust that the grooves on either side of the jig will be perfectly in line. I think I could refine the jig a bit more, but for now the biggest concern is flipping the jig over without shifting the workpiece so that I could route those grooves on the other side. For now it works out nicely and I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. Another concern is scaling this up for larger pieces. I have a large apothecary cabinet to build soon and I'll see how it works out. With the size of my CNC router, I may have to tile the pieces and glue them together, but it should work out just fine, but uh, I guess I'll share it with you guys when it happens. Thank you. 
Next, I can cut the short dividers to length of the crosscut sled, which again is done after making multiple test cuts sneaking up on the right fit. This is a situation where you rely on measuring directly off your workpiece and not what your plans or drawings say. From here, I start prepping for the glue up. This includes sanding and finishing the inner faces of each case piece. I recently bought this little 3 inch Metabo sander specifically for small projects like this. The normal 5 inch sanders can be a bit unwieldy for small parts and, unless you have a vacuum clamping system, can be somewhat dangerous getting so close to your hands. So far, it's worked out pretty well. It obviously isn't as fast as a 5 inch sander, but it's a bit easier to control, which was the whole point in the first place. I mask off any areas that will receive glue, and then apply a single coat of shellac before moving on to the glue up. In the past, I would glue these smaller chests up in stages. First, I would do the outer case or the outer case and vertical dividers, and then add the horizontal dividers later. I realized it was simpler to do it all at once if you work from the middle out. By starting from the middle out, I avoid sliding the dividers through the dados and pushing glue everywhere. Once the dividers are together, I then add the two side panels, then I add the bottom panel, then the back panel, and finally the top. Oh, and I also add a ton of parallel clamps. With the case mostly done for now, I turn my attention to the drawers. As usual, I try to work in some type of grain match or book match or what have you for the drawer fronts. In this instance, I'm resawing an 8 quarter board into 3 thinner boards, one for each row of drawers. I make sure to label these throughout the process so that I keep track of their sequence. While ripping the drawer fronts to width, I also rip the drawer sides and backs so that they're all consistent. In this case, the drawer sides and back are made of maple. The joinery for the drawers is a half blind lock joint, also called a tongue and dado joint. I have a video going over the joint, so I'll quickly go over it now. The first cut is made into either end of the drawer front at a depth equal to the thickness of the drawer sides. The distance between the fence and the blade is the most critical part of the joint and requires a few test cuts to get right. The next cut removes the inner part of the drawer front which leaves us with the tongue part of the joint. Then the last cut is a dado in the drawer sides. All of these cuts should be done with the fence at the same exact placement. Only the blade will move. In the end, you're left with a neat looking joint that is fairly durable. And I should say that the blade is an eighth inch thick kerf with a flat bottom grind. I'll have a link to the one I use in the description below. The rest of the drawer parts and joinery are pretty straightforward. Each part receives a quarter inch groove to hold the plywood bottom. The back of the sides receive a dado to house the drawer back. I gave the inside faces a coat of shellac before gluing them up. And this is another clamp bottleneck situation, but luckily I have enough 4 to 6 inch clamps to get them all done at once. I've mentioned it in the past, but I like to leave a slight overhang about a sixteenth of an inch on my casework so that I can come back later and flush it up with a flush trim bit. I do the same thing with the drawers, and if you do this, make sure to compensate by increasing the length of your case or drawer pieces, or your measurements will be off a little bit. For Christmas, I got the little Lee Nielsen number 101 violin maker's plane, which is the little brother to the 102 low angle block plane. 
It's great for small projects like this, but first I had to get the blade ready to go. I start with a few diamond plates, then move to the water stone, and finally a strop. And then here we go, trimming up the drawers. I made a simple base and then added a ton of round rovers to every edge on the piece. Lately I've been using a miniature bearing 332nd inch round over bit from Amana. I'll have a link in the description below. It really excels with inside corners like the drawer cubbies of the case as well as the insides of the drawers. Typically I'll attach the base with glue or tabletop fasteners, but for this build the client wanted the option to hang the chest or have it stand on a base. To work around this constraint I added dowels to each leg which corresponded to holes in the bottom of the case. I transferred those holes using dowel centers and I started the holes with a brad point bit to prevent tear out and ensure accurate placement, then finished it with a regular twist bit which doesn't have a brad point taking up a ton of depth. The back panel is inset a half inch specifically to allow for this French cleat to exist. Half of the cleat is attached to the back panel here, while the other half will be attached to the wall. With the cleat inset, the chest will sit flush with the wall as opposed to jutting out. While the inside of the project got a single coat of shellac, the outside gets two coats of Osmo Top Oil. I apply the oil with a white scotch Brite pad, let it sit for a few minutes, then wipe it completely dry with some blue shop towels. If you forget to wipe down any of the parts, say, maybe the wall half of the French cleat, my friend said to simply rub it down with some mineral spirits and you should be back in business. After adding my brand on the back, I pre-drill for the drawer pulls. I made a quick guide that slips over the top left corner of each drawer, ensuring that all of them are drilled consistently. And that about does it for this one. I do have plans available for a smaller version of this, but they can easily be scaled up to this size. They'll be linked in the description below. If you enjoy projects like this and want to see them while they're being made, follow me on Instagram at Perillaworks. Thanks for watching.